Hello, this is Anthony Rutuno. This is interview number four in a series with local musicians in Madrid. Uh, number three is in production at the moment, which is a fancy way of saying that um, I'm so technophobic that I haven't actually worked, haven't sorted it out yet. Uh, anyway, okay, so we got uh, Kester Jones here. How are you doing, Kester? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. We're in the bookshop. We're on location today, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the ground floor of a bookshop <laughs> in Madrid. Very fancy. All right, I'm going to give you a few standard questions and then we'll get deep and philosophical later okay. on. All right. Uh, whereabouts are you from? Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit. Is there a music scene where you're from or has where you're from influenced uh, your music at all? Um, well, I was, I was born in London, but then my parents moved to Norfolk on the East Coast uh, when I was like eight years old. So I kind of started playing music in, in Norfolk um, and there isn't much of a music scene there really. Uh, there's lots of kind of covers bands and pub bands and stuff. Um, and no famous bands from there? I can't think Who's of any. Who's from Norwich? Someone, someone asked me this the other day. The only band I could think of was The Darkness. Oh, Do you right. remember that kind of Where were they uh, from? That big, bombastic rock band? Hmm. I think they were from um, Great Yarmouth, actually. I was just thinking, actually, for our American uh, listeners, <laughs> uh, I interviewed David and he said he was a hillbilly. Would, like, would Norfolk be the English equivalent of a hillbilly? Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Is that know. a bit Nor tenuous? Norfolk or South Sort of countryside, right? Yeah, countryside? yeah, countryside, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then I, I went to university in Manchester, which obviously has a lot more things happening there. Mm. A, lot oh, yeah. more, a lot more going on. Absolutely. Um, so when, when did you start playing music? And, well, where were you when you started playing music? Because maybe that will tell us what influenced you, I guess. So what um, age were you and where I were you at the time? Well, actually, I started playing piano when I was 10. Um, yeah, I had piano lessons. Um, started with kind of normal you know, beginner piano things, three blind mice, that sort oh, of yeah. thing. Good old three blind mice. Yeah. And uh, I actually started playing guitar two years after. But yeah, nothing influenced from around where I was, yeah, around there at all. Where were you then? In that, that was in Norfolk. In Norfolk, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, did you actually learn the piano voluntarily? Because it seems like everyone who learns the piano when they're a kid <laughs> is just forced to do it. I never yeah. met anyone who actually learned it voluntarily. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was voluntarily. Okay. Um, actually, what happened is my my mum started trying to learn piano a little bit. And I kind of got curious and started kind of joining in when she was learning. And then after a few weeks, she realised that I was progressing... <laughs> faster than she was yeah and she asked if I wanted piano lessons so I said mm, yeah okay <laughs> and how do the how do the lessons help you with like later on when you start playing say rock music because I always wonder because like Paul McCartney famously said that you know the tiny bit of piano tuition he had was counterproductive because it it meant that he knew what to do quote unquote you know what I mean because there's there's a kind of mystery people who've never learned any mu any musical instruments there's that great mysterious thing about piano or guitar where you don't know what to do so I don't know did it help or hinder or both um I'd say it helped up to a point hmm. um because when I started learning guitar you know, but basically my my dad played guitar um in bands in like the late 60s and the 70s and my mum played guitar a bit as well and my my stepdad also played guitar so there was mm. always a guitar in the house yeah, and one day, I, I can't remember why exactly, but I I picked up one of the guitars and I, I tried to kind of apply what I'd learned from piano to, to the guitar a little bit. Um, so it kind of helped with starting to work out what the notes were a little bit. But then, I mean, one, one of the first things I tried to learn to play on guitar was the the solo from Hey Joe, which obviously piano is not, isn't, isn't going to help for mm. that at all in any way. Um, but yeah, it was kind of useful to apply things, some of the theory for things. I had, I, actually, I had piano lessons up until grade five, and then I wanted, I was trying to play more kind of jazz and blues, and my teacher couldn't do anything in that area at all, so I yeah. stopped having lessons, basically. Yeah, I mean, what I, what I found was that I, I learned to make a noise on the piano. I did the opposite to you, actually. I played the guitar, yeah. and then when I learned the piano, I just thought, well, let's take a C chord, C, E, G, play it on the piano, and then someone... I had a teacher and he said, I'll oh, just play octaves on the left hand. And I took it from there, I learned a blues scale. And I suddenly thought, well, I can make a fairly decent noise playing this bluesy stuff. Yeah. Learning scales is not going to be much fun, you know. So it's, 
it's one of them. Um, yeah, I mean, most of what I play on piano now when I play piano has nothing to do with mm. the lessons that I had, mm. really. I mean, it's okay. stuff I worked out for myself. And can you remember who you were listening to when you started, like, uh, influences? Yeah, I mean, well, I didn't have any piano influences. That was just kind of no, traditional right, yeah. lessons. No, right, yeah, thinking more guitar, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Guitar influences, I suppose, it's kind of an obvious one, cliche, but Jimi Hendrix mm -hmm. was the, one of the, the main ones. I think also kind of blues stuff. Um, I think like one of the first one of the first cassettes I had was uh, T Bone Walker. Oh yeah, and BB uh, King. He also, recently died, of course. Yeah, two days ago, three days ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Eighty nine years old though. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, as you yeah you said the other day here. Yeah. <laughs> a good innings. Yeah, good yeah innings, that's yeah. that's about the most English thing you could possibly say <laughs> in the whole world. Is yeah, definitely. He had a good innings. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, so I had like so a few blues things. The soundtrack from the film Crossroads. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. With uh, Steve Vai, yeah, that guitar duel at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to listen to that a lot. Yeah, that's um, good. But yeah, so I just used to kind of yeah, blues was my main early influence, and I used to try and copy what people were doing. Did yeah, you learn so. many? Did you learn much of Hendrix? Because yeah. a lot of it's very weird, isn't it? Is it actually quite easy to learn the basics or, or not? Um, a lot of the. A lot of the solo things are actually, most of it's just kind of blues scales, mm. really. There's random notes added in here and there, mm. but it's kind of weird, actually. For the first few years I was playing guitar, I could only do guitar solos. I couldn't do rhythm guitar. Yeah. Well, that's um, that's often the way, actually. I was going to say that. Like, yeah. you can often tell, like, from people, from the first thing they learn is they either learn chords or some people go straight for the solos, like you said. Mm. Uh, yeah, it took a few years before I actually realised that the uh, the rhythm was quite important. Yeah, well. yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things about Hendrix, you probably know this already, he was, a, he was of course, a backing guitarist for years and yeah, years yeah, yeah. on this thing called the Chitlin Circuit in America. And um, there's a guy, I know I haven't learned much Hendrix myself, but there's a guy on YouTube who plays Castles Made of Sand, yeah. the rhythm part, and he's obviously learned it perfectly, and you realise what a brilliant rhythm guitar part it is. Yeah, you know, because no, Hendrix I mean, was not just the lead guitarist, obviously. No, his, his rhythm playing is excellent, mm. and, and of course he could play both at the same time. Yeah, as well. and very much influenced from all the kind of the soul guys that he was playing with back yeah. when he was touring around and stuff. Well, I was going to say, from watching you with your band, who we'll talk about later on, yeah, I can see some of that. You seem to play kind of not full chords and not notes. You seem to yeah, play these kind of partial yeah. chords. Yeah, so I, I love you know that two string, three string stuff. Where would that come from? Yeah, I mean, it's. I kind of feel when I'm accompanying other people, it's not really, it's not really necessary to play full chords or kind of big open chords or bar chords because mm. usually if if someone's playing their songs, then they're kind of covering that part of it. I think. So I generally try to um, try to kind of occupy a different space away from mm. what they're doing. I think like some parts, it's good to double it if you want it extra loud or something. But um, yeah, I generally try and pick up bits that are more melodic or. Little bits here and there. Mm. Is there anyone you got that from, or is it just something you worked out? Um, maybe Radiohead actually would be mm. would be that because obviously um, in Radiohead they've got three guitarists, so yeah. each guitar is doing something very different, and some part some of the parts are I think deceptively simple, mm. and I think it's it's good to to actually try to do something more minimal sometimes, and yeah, it well, can it can sometimes it can actually have a can end up kind of giving something a bigger sound, although you're mm. doing something that's more minimal. Yeah, because um, early Stones as well, Brian Jones, era yeah. Stones. Yeah, that's true. And it's very, very clear who's playing what. Well, one, once you know what their styles are like. And they blended them quite nicely, yeah. yeah They've yeah. always managed to do that. Whereas, you know, Beatles, of course, they had a rhythm guitar and a lead guitar. So yeah, much I suppose more, more kind of clearly defined roles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And rhythmically as well. So, like, if someone's playing, like, a really strong rhythm, mm. or maybe... Again, I'll maybe try and do something different. Maybe something picking out individual bits or more kind of ringing, mm. kind of yeah, partial chords, as you said before. And you kind of have this perpetual motion thing going on. I've noticed. How do you? Kind of, you never stay in one spot on the neck. You're kind of always moving around. Right. Yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah. it's, but it's always you know, understated. Is that the word? Obviously, when you get to your solo, you, you go for it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I suppose there's a place for like a, a kind of a big solo, but I. Mm. I kind of think a solo that doesn't complement the song is a bit pointless as well. So mm. I, 